present at Mrs. Brownell's delightful garden party were Miss Dotty Duckenfield and that respected pillar of society, Mr. Michael Lanyard, alias the Lone Wolf, retired. Once the world's most notorious and distinguished jewel thief. <laughs> Whilst his man, Jameson, spent a delectable evening entertaining the local Boy Scouts outing with practical jokes, conjuring tricks, fireworks... Fireworks? So that's what you have in that package. Don't you know that's illegal, Jameson? Oh, yes, sir, but do we have to be pillars every day of the week, sir? Sundays and holidays included? Couldn't we just treat ourselves to a small crime or two on my days off, sir? Couldn't we, sir, just for old lang syne, sir, couldn't we? I haven't forgotten the old days, Jameson. No, I haven't you, sir. Haven't you, really? Oh, no, indeed. Oh, look, sir. A lovely sight. A very lovely sight. Can we help you? Why, yes. Do you mind giving me a lift? I'm just going a short way down the road. Not at all. What about your car? Oh, I don't know. I'll phone from the house where I'm going and have the garage man do something about it. I'm in an awful hurry. Please, can't we go a little faster? Oh, but, sir, we're doing 30 now. Having trouble, Arthur? No, Mr. Cooper. The bag was a little full and I had to repack it. Can't seem to get this in the lock. There we are, sir. Arthur. Now, uh, what are your orders? I'm to take the luggage to the airport, sir, and have it put aboard the plane. That's right. Then what? On the way back to town, sir, I'm to telephone you at about 10 o'clock and let you know if that certain party has left for the plane. That's right, Arthur. Is that all, sir? Good night, Arthur. Good night, sir. Goodbye. Not at all. Goodbye. Coming, Jameson. Yes. Oh, yes, sir. Oh, it's you, Arthur. Yes, Miss Andrews. About time you got here. Kid's got a bad case of ants, always in a stew. Take it easy, Mike. The bracelet's there now, waiting for Cooper in his drawing room. Boy, what a racket. I wish I knew this guy's angle. I'll tell you so you know what you're up against. Cooper was the dough back of your pal Davy Simpson's fancy gambling joints. He was the yeah, dough... Yeah, but they closed Simpson down a long time ago. Sure. But a lot of prominent citizens, Cooper's society playmates, had big IOUs outstanding with Davy, which IOUs are now in Mr. Cooper's hands. Cooper's got them good and he knows it. So when he turns on the heat, they come across. That dirty blackmailer. Davy takes the rap and he's still operating. When will I get my hands on the rap? All right, Mike, take it easy. If the stuff's not on Cooper, it'll be in the wall safe. Here's the combination. Okay, Artie, if Sonny Boy here can just keep his shirt on long enough, we'll do all right. All right, keep out of sight and make sure you wait till Cooper's alone.
Jameson, what's happened? Out with it, man! <coughs> Just look, sir. A star sapphire of excellent quality, sir, surrounded by diamonds. A fine hole, sir, and a neat job well done, if I do say, so, sir. You idiot. You petty bird brain. Did you dare? I did indeed, sir. The young lady never even missed it. Jameson, you're fired. No, but you can't stop progress, sir. This is the birth of a new era, and fate, dame fate, has us by the hand. Well, tell her to hang on, because I have you by the other hand, Jameson, and I'm leading you right back to return this handbag before we have all the police in New York after us. Please let me go, Harry, please. You know I shouldn't have come here tonight. The Sheldons... But, Eve, I didn't know you were here. Did Arthur let you in? He didn't tell me. You weren't really going to run off without letting me know you were here, were you, Eve? You know, I never could have forgiven that. Oh, I'm sorry. That's the doorbell. Will you uh, have a cigarette? No, thanks. I'll get you a drink in a minute. Sonia, how nice. Someday, someone's going to cut that throat of yours. From here to here. Careful, my sweet. Remember that Slavic temper of yours. Don't let it get the better of you. I mean it, Harry. That murderous light in your eyes is very becoming, my dear. But of course you know that. Stay that way for me, won't you, darling? I adore it. Miss Merrick. Well, come in, Jane. You too. Yes, me too. Harry, what is this? Little Eve, too. Well, the man is fantastic. Imagine daring to bring us all here together. It's magnificent. Well, Harry always had a wonderful sense of humor, you know. Why did you come here tonight? Oh. No doubt for the same pretty reason you came. My darlings, I propose a toast. Well, here's to me anyway. I know what you're going through, Eve. Believe me, I'm sorry. Sonia and Jane, too. Truly, my heart bleeds for you all. I'd like to see that. I'd give anything to see that bleeding heart of yours. If he has a heart. Just so it bleeds. Perhaps you'll be relieved to hear, my pets, that I'm leaving town. Really? That's why I was forced to ask you to come here tonight. As a matter of fact, I'm leaving on a sort of honeymoon. And I thought that each of you girls would be delighted to make a little uh, contribution to my future happiness. Eve, I believe you are going to bring me a diamond bracelet. Oh, yes. Very pretty it is, too. Very pretty. Sweet of you, Eve. Oh, there's that gleam in your eye again, Sonia. I love it. Sonia, I believe you did bring that marquee diamond, didn't you? Yes. Beautiful. Thank you. And Jane. Jane, I believe you have a little trinket for me. Oh, yes, I remember. A diamond clip. And it has emeralds, too. Exquisite. I have to admit you have me hooked this time. Because it happens to be a critical point in my career. Oh, yes, that play you're in at the Royal Theatre. Doing fine, eh? Yes, but if the papers ever started to talk about what a fool I've been, the play would be ruined and I'd be washed up. Oh, that would be a pity. Yes, it would. But next time, Harry. Next time, look out. Harry. 
You must promise me you won't. You must promise me this is the last time. You know how I feel about you, don't you, Harry? I don't think there'd better be any next time. But girls, you have my word as a gentleman. <laughs> well, maybe you're right. You know, you girls never should have allowed yourselves to become so indebted to me. Because now what can you do? Nothing. You've got to pay up. And you'll keep on paying just as long as I feel like squeezing you. You know, when you come to think about it, blackmail is a terrible thing, isn't it? Don't go away, girls, will you? Hello? Oh, hello, my dears. Another victim. A swine. I could choke him. No, 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 no. I'll see you at the airport. Come on, let's get out of here. I'll take a chance if you will. No, wait. Sheldon's are announcing my engagement at the party tonight. I've got to be there. But if Harry makes a scandal now, it'll ruin my whole life. Well, what about me? Being the wife of Dr. Eric Bourdain isn't exactly heaven, but if you ever found out I was mixed up in a thing like this... Well, I have more to lose than either of you. But I have a hunch if we all refuse to be intimidated, he wouldn't dare expose the three of us. Oh, I know it's valuable. But it'll be perfectly safe with me. I'll take good care of it. Of course I do. You know I do. Lots. Me too. I'd do anything. I'd give anything in the world not to have to be afraid of him for the rest of my life. I can't stand it this way. All right, then let's face him. Let's see what he thinks he can do about it. Take his time now, but when he comes out, we'll show him. Oh! What happened? What's that? Sonia! Sonia, Sonia Jane, Jane, where are you? Sonia, please stay where you are. Well, this is ridiculous. Yeah. Harry's still so Jane, can't somebody do something about it? Don't oh, you Harry! Where are you? I told you, Jameson, you are to deliver the handbag to the lady in person, just as though you'd found it. And Jameson, on the way out, don't snatch it again. Jameson, you might leave that packet here for a minute. Or don't you trust me with it? Oh, well, sir. Never mind. Return the bag and get back here quick. Anybody at home? anybody. Nobody at home. Jameson. There's nobody at home?
Jameson, what are you up to now? Oh, Mr. Lanyard, look, there's, there, 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 there's a thing in there, sir. Look, you, you look for Mr. Lanyard, that is... Dead all right. It could have been more than ten minutes ago. Hello. As a matter of fact, it couldn't have been more than five or six minutes ago. Say seven forty-one or two. What is it? You've turned out all the lights in the house, sir. I thought I heard something. Well, it's probably your nerves. Undoubtedly. Oh, well, you never know, do you, Mr. Lanyard? Just think of it, that beautiful, wide-eyed, innocent dream with the gorgeous handbag plugged him right in the heart. Mr. Harry Cooper. Oh, yes, how do you do, sir? Oh, I beg your pardon. Oh, lovely, sir, lovely. Well, whoever he was, he certainly lived well, didn't he, sir? Come on, Jefferson, we've been here long enough. My package, sir. I've forgotten my package. Never mind that, Jefferson. Police. Police? How exciting. Shall we fly, sir? No, you idiot. My car's out there and it has a license number. Here. You go inside and sound like a nice 4th of July party, and I'll get rid of the cop. Yes, how large a party, sir? Oh, just medium size, but respectable, remember right, that. Right, I'm just a few of the neighbors dropped in for a jolly good time over the glorious 4th. Yes. Why, how do you do, officer? That's your car parked on the wrong side of the street in front of that fire hydrant? Oh, I am sorry, officer. It, uh, <laughs> it belongs to one of my guests. <laughs> it shouldn't have been parked there, should it? Agatha, don't look now, but your slip is showing. Oh, mine? Oh, I say. Huh. I'll, uh, I'll see that it's moved at once. Join me in a problem. Listen, friends. Did I ever tell you the occasion when I was sticking it in there? Just a quiet little fourth of July party for a few of the neighbors. And I stuck my lungs. <laughs> Carter, right through the heart. And not so long ago either. About 7.41 as I figure it. Well, you and the inspector can figure it out together. You're both under arrest.
Give me police headquarters. Inspector Crane's office, Detective Dickens speaking. It's for you, Chief. <laughs> Crane speaking. Who? Where? When? Yeah. Okay. Keep an eye on him. Be right there. Come on, Dickens. Never mind that. Come on, man. Let's go. It's murder, Dickens. Murder. It certainly is. what I see? Mike Lanyard. Hello, Inspector. How are you, Dickens? We're delighted to see you both. Caught red-handed. I'm surprised, Mike. Watch him, officer. Watch him, officer. It's murder this time, ain't it, Chief? Such a Dickens, either they're not armed. <laughs> Never mind the cuffs for a while. The boys may want to reenact the crime for us. Yes. Hey, go, go away. Stop it, Dickens. Stop it. You know I'm ticklish. <laughs> Uh -huh. These are two men you found with the body? Yes, sir. There's nobody else? No, sir. Watch him. Well, Mike, you're going to have to do some fast thinking to talk yourself out of this one. All right, Crane. If you three gentlemen will just make yourselves comfortable, Jameson and I will tell you exactly what happened. That's the spirit, Lanyard. Dickens, get every word of this down on paper. Do you mind if I smoke? Go ahead. Jameson. You're over here. Oh, yes, sir. I believe this door was open a little like this. No trick, Landon. Now, now, Inspector. Won't you ever learn to trust me? Go on, Mike. Dickens, you're right there, minding your own business. You don't know it, but you're about to be murdered. <coughs> I'm here. Jameson is right there. And who knows who's outside in the garden? The dead man is there. There you are, Dickens. But are you innocent? No. You're a cruel, heartless fiend. A ruthless robber of widows and orphan children. No. You think you're safe, don't you? Sitting there wallowing in all your luxury, but you're wrong. You are about to die. Here, what are you doing, Mike? Get after him. deliberately smash those phonograph records just so we'd be arrested and have your idea of fun escaping from the police. Ah, but you must admit it was stimulating, sir. Supposing you'd had to spend the evening at that Mrs. What's-her-name's garden party. It'll be stimulating, all right, if the inspector catches up with us. Our only hope of saving ourselves from a murder charge is to solve this case ourselves. First, we've got to find out who that girl is. Take a look in that evening bag. There's nothing here, sir. Lipstick and powder and... Oh. And a most intriguing perfume, sir. Isn't that the girl's car there? Here we are, Jameson. The car belongs to Eve Andrews, 191 Park Avenue. Let's go. Oh, but she won't be home now, sir. How do you know? 
Well, sir, according to Sidney Shannon's gossip column, Miss Eve Andrews is the Park Avenue lovely whose engagement to socialite John Sheldon II is to be announced at the swanky affair at the Park Avenue Hotel this evening. I know I'm going to regret this, Jameson, but I'm afraid you're rehired. Oh, thank you, sir. And you're invited to crash that party with me as my guest. Yes, sir, but don't you think we'd sort of better be toddling along, sir? Oh, it's turning out to be a most enjoyable evening, sir. Most enjoyable. And profitable, too. Or should I tell you about it? Yes, Jameson, I think you'd better. Oh, very well, then, sir. Here goes. Look. Now what have you done? Where did you get that stuff? Uh, I just sort of found them, sir, in the library. These lovely glittering little baubles were right there on the floor, spread around the late Mr. Cooper's corpus delicti. You congenital nitwit. First you snatch the lady's handbag and get us into this mess, and now you've stolen the dead man's jewellery and given the police conclusive evidence of our motive in committing the murder. Oh, we haven't murdered anybody, sir. Oh, tell that to the judge. Well, I, well... We're being followed, sir. Police? No, sir. A couple of storybook characters. I don't recognize them. Mm, I seem to know the type. All right, Hazard, you win. Now I don't like it. Me too, and I'm stopping right here. Go phone the boss landers, give them up the works, and we're tailing them. Good work, Jameson. You've got us rarely involved now. Thank you, sir. Uh, uh, your invitation card, sir. This gentleman here. Uh, uh, your cards, please. Oh, yeah, oh, oh uh, that gentleman there. <laughs> oh, uh, thank you, sir. That's troubling me. You seem to be a million miles away. Oh, it's nothing, Johnny. Come on, let's have a drink. Fine. Miss Andrews. Oh, oh, thank you. I was so worried. I was afraid I'd lost it. Oh, I'm so sorry. This is my fiancé, Mr. Sheldon. Glad to know you. How do you do? My name is Norton. Frank Norton. Isn't it wonderful, Johnny? Mr. Norton found my bag for me. I thought for sure it was gone. Johnny, do you mind getting me that drink? Coming up, Eve. May I get you one? No, thank you. I don't see how you ever found me, Mr. Norton. I'm very grateful. Now, if you'll forgive me, I have some friends I must speak to. Thanks again. Uh, just a minute, Miss Andrews. I must ask you a few questions about uh, what you were doing at Cooper's house tonight. I beg your pardon. Oh, really, Mr. Norton. Answer me, Miss Andrews. Why did you go there? How dare you question me? Harry Cooper is dead. He was murdered. Oh, Johnny, I promised this one to Mr. Norton. You don't mind? No, why no? Uh, good evening, Mr. Shannon. Good evening. Hello, Sydney. Oh, Brenda. It's nice to see you. Hello, Hello, Mr. Glorious. Sir. My, you look lovely. Oh, Why, right, Sydney, darling, haven't seen you for ages. Gloria, having a nice time? Yes. Hello, Shannon. Oh, hello, Harry. How's the gossip bracket? Oh, very nice, Harry, very nice. Hello, Johnny. Oh, hello, Shannon. Here. How can I tell you more? Mr. Cooper was all right when I got there. That's all I know. That he wasn't dead when you arrived? Of course not. That is, I... No, he wasn't. He was alive when you arrived. I got there myself within four or five minutes after he was killed. You'd better tell me the truth. I've told you all I know. Um... My father's right over there. He has a list of guests if you want it. You better watch out, Johnny. They make a nice looking couple. Miss Andrews, who killed Harry Cooper? I don't know. He was in the other room. The lights went out, a shot was fired, and Harry was dead when we... We? Who's we? Hello, Mike. Hello, Shannon. 
quite a pleasant surprise. Hmm? Oh, just a friend. <laughs> Caledonia 4, 9, 6, 8, 7. Interesting little item just came in over the teletype, Mike. Um, according to the police, you escaped after having been arrested for the murder of Harry Cooper. I could use your full confession in my column, Mike. How about it? What do you think, Sid? Does it sound like my kind of job? Well, frankly, no. Not much you're slipping. It's a little too crude around the edges. But the police want you, and... It would be quite a feather in my little cap if I turned you in. Can't you see the headlines? Sidney Shannon, Broadway columnist, captures Lone Wolf. Well, let me be the first to congratulate you. Let's have a drink on it. Hmm. Four, nine, six, eight, seven. Then four, nine, six, eight, seven. Yeah. Caledonia. There's only one hitch. Hmm? If you turn me in and print that story, where are you going to stand with your boss when he finds out that I'm as innocent as a newborn lamb? Who cares? If you're innocent, that's tomorrow's news. Meanwhile, I have my headline. <laughs> Look, Sidney, I'm on the trail of a bigger story than just the murder of Harry Cooper. How would you like a couple of nice, scandalous sidelights involving very prominent people? I'd like it. All right, let's make a deal. You play along with me for a while tonight, and I'll promise you a story that will burn the ears of some of your best friends. Why not? I can use a few more stellar names in my cast. Besides, uh, I always have you, sweetheart. Let's go. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Lanyard. I'm afraid I've failed you. I... Oh, that's all right, Jameson. We're going to help Mr. Shannon find out all he can about the case for his column before he turns us over to the police. Yes, that's really very nice of us, isn't it, sir? Well, Mr. Lanyard, she went directly to her phone. I've got the number, but I don't know whom she spoke to or what she said. What's the number? Oh, yes, the number, sir. Um, Caledonia 4... Four, nine, six, eight, seven. Oh, thank you. Caledonia 49687 is something called the Balalaika. Oh, that's one of those tourist nightclubs. Nobody ever goes there. You're going there tonight, Sydney. They're holding a table in your name. Yes, How are we going to find out who it was Miss Andrews called to the balalaika? I haven't the faintest idea. Looks like a wild goose chase if you ask me. I'll bet you a bottle of champagne. He'll find out who it was Eve Andrews called. You've got a bet. Paul Roger, 1929. You speak English, don't you? Oh, of course. I have been many years in this country. My secretary, Miss Andrews, phoned 15 minutes ago and spoke to someone of a party of friends of mine. Do you know where they're sitting? Look, mister, it's hot, see, and I got plenty of things in my mind. So don't have me on that my secretary business. <laughs> I guess that'll hold you, Mike. <laughs> Julie calls all evening with a couple of reservations, two wrong numbers, and a call for Dr. Boudin's wife. Oh, yeah, and some screw out of town by trying to date one of the names in the show. Thanks, that's all I wanted to know. Where is Mrs. Boudin, Mrs. Right over there, in the corner, with the doctor. Шашлык не очень вкусный сегодня. Dr. Boudin? Is that Dr. Eric Boudin, the surgeon? That's right. Okay. 
Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Mr. Shannon, for the bottle of Paul Roger 29 that you're about to buy me. Buy him the champagne, Shannon, but uh, don't drink it yet. You're not well. You're not at all well. I'm not. Who, me? But I feel fine, sir. You and Mr. Shannon go to his table. I'll wait here. You see, Jameson, you're going to be violently ill. So ill, in fact, that you're going to require the immediate attention of Dr. Eric Bodine. Oh, but I feel first rate, sir, once I get that bottle of champagne inside of me. Jameson, <laughs> you got me into this mess. The least you can do is get sick and collapse when I tell you to. Good evening, Mr. Shannon. I saved the table for you. Right yeah. this way, please, gentlemen. Thank you. Hello. And uh, what will it be, gentlemen? A bottle of Paul Roger 29. Make it snappy, will you? And be sure it's cool and very dry. Well, hurry up, my man, and just stand there. Uh, very, very well, sir. Oh, but Jemison, aren't you too ill for champagne? Oh, uh, not yet, Mr. Shannon, not yet. I'm afraid you uh, are, Jemison. You're a very sick man. Uh, right now. Doctor, will you come over here, please? Good evening. I beg your pardon? Eve Andrews sent me. What do you want? Thank you. Maybe. I don't know. Well, your initials are on it. It was found at Harry Cooper's house, shortly after he was murdered. Well, you knew Harry Cooper, didn't you? You were there when... I don't know what you're talking about. I never heard of Harry Cooper or Eve Andrews, or you for that matter. Now get out! Mrs. Bodine, why did you kill Harry Cooper? How dare you accost me like this? I have the way to throw you out. Oh, my dear, madam. Sasha, please. Ivan Petrovich. Please, please, don't create Help a scene. Help me. Come on, what's the matter? What are you doing here? This man is annoying me. Throw him out. No, 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 no. Come, gentlemen, you come. You have no Mrs. right to Mrs. Bodine is unduly excited. I insist my that you find my friend, Dr. Bodine. I insist that you well, find you my waiting? friend, Dr. Why Bodine. I'm oh, sorry. Here. It's all my fault. Forgive me, Mike. You see, madame, my friend and I were seated over there, and I thought I recognized you, and I asked him to speak to you. I'm terribly sorry, and I apologize. Come on, honey bunch, let's go places. Good night, Mrs. Bodine. Glad to see me, Mike. I was glad to see anyone just then. Where did you drop from, Vivian? Oh, the heavens, like the little rescuing angel I am. Still love me? Uh -huh. Well, you should. After all, darling, I just saved your life, didn't I? Mm -hmm. And it isn't the first time, remember Monte Carlo? Mm -hmm. So, uh, for old time's sake, the least you could do is see me home. Mm, sorry, Vivian, I'm a little busy tonight. Well, you can see me to my car anyway. Well, of course, darling. Just as I thought. Oh, where's your car? Right around the corner. You know, Mike, this is so nice. Well, well, Mr. Lanyard, get in and make yourself at home. Viper? Sorry, Mike. What is it, Doctor? Don't worry, gentlemen, he's in good hands. But I wish to consult the patient and his friend in private. What's your verdict, Doctor? Hello, Shannon. Hello, Doc. There is no time to lose. See, my friend, I show what I want to do. 
I'm going to cut from here to here. Oh. Yeah, but I feel better now. In fact, I think I'm going to be all right. A remarkable recovery. Yes, well, you see, I, I am very remarkable. From me say so, you're unique. Physically, you are as sound as a nut. Which reminds me, I'm deeply concerned by the peculiar look in your eye. It is not normal. I suggest that you place yourself in the hands of a competent brain specialist. <laughs> what are you up to, Shannon? Building up some phony gossip for that column of yours? <laughs> you and your cooked up stories. I'm having a nice quiet dinner with my wife. With your wife? <laughs> Why, doctor, that's a front page scoop on itself. If you ever have any slight ailment, Dr. Shannon, do come to me. It will give me a great pleasure to operate. Oh, don't worry, doctor. I don't make scandal. I only print gossip. And if you want to take your wife out uh, <clears throat> on the side once in a while, that's all right with me. Only don't be so blatant about it. People will talk, you know. <laughs> well, it's a sense he ain't got the stuff with him. Lanyard, we mean business. We spend weeks on this job. Just when everything's all set, we arrive at Cooper's house and find the guy dead. If you bumped him, that's your business. All we want is the jewels. He probably passed them on to that dame in the nightclub. Hey, maybe he slipped into somebody at that party. That's the first place he headed for. Why don't you use your heads, you two? You saw the detective search me at Cooper's house, didn't you? I know this guy landed from way back. He don't pass nothing on to nobody. He's planted those jewels somewhere in Cooper's house. If you're going to go around there, boys, uh, be careful. The police are there, you know. Well, they don't worry me. I'm going to take a look. Not without me, you don't. We're sticking together, Mac. He don't trust me. All right, Hazard. But he stays here, just in case we don't find him. Here. Keep him quiet till we get back. If he makes a move, let your conscience be your guide. Come on. my pretty one, at last I have you in my power. <laughs> oh, Mike, I've been waiting for years for this moment. Come one step nearer, Vivian, and I'll scream the house down. Great work, if you can get it. Just imagine, my sweet. Suppose I weren't tied up like this. Look, Mike, let's get this straight. In spite of you giving us the double cross on the Cooper job, I uh, still could go for you. Because I think you're just the cutest little fellow I ever knew. But don't get me wrong. I'd just as soon plug you as not. Please untie me, darling. And let's get comfortable. Mm-mm. Well, at least let's have a drink to a time I can remember when I wasn't all tied up. Sure, why not? I'll fix one big drink and we'll have a loving cup. But uh, Mama is going to feed it to Baby. I'll get some ice. Oh, uh, don't go away, darling. Thanks, sweetheart. I just sent for the house, Dick. You're crazy, Mike. Haven't you got any sense? You ought to know better than to call the cops in on a deal. Well, now what are we going to do? Sorry, Vivian, but uh, what'll the house Dick think if he breaks in here and finds me all tied up in this chair? Open up! What's going on in there? All right, Mike. I'll get even. Only well, remember, it's up to you to talk us out of this, and don't forget, I've still got a gun, and I just love to use it. Just a minute, please. Open the door, I'll break it down. Open the door. Okay, Mike, but talk fast. Remember, you've got more to lose than I have. Hey, what goes on? 
Oh, funny business, huh? Hey, but it was a man who yelled for help. <laughs> What's the matter, mister? You scared of her? Uh -huh. Sorry we troubled you. It was all a mistake. The lady thought she'd lost some jewels just because she couldn't remember where she put them. <laughs> you know how women are. Just a minute, sister. Is that your gun? Well, where do you suppose that came from? Is it yours? You mean this? Yeah. Look, it's loaded. Oh, it isn't mine. Maybe you'd better talk it over with a lady. Open that door! Unlock it! My name's Jamison, but you can call me Jamie. What's your name? My name's Elsie. Oh, oh, oh. Elsie. Well, I'm glad you two had sense enough to wait for me here. Police headquarters, please. Oh, are you sure you're calling the right number, sir? Uh, let me talk to Inspector Crane's office. Now look, Mike, a deal's a deal. And you promised me Inspector I'd begin... Inspector Crane there? Michael Lanyard. Who? Oh, yes, Mr. Lanyard, Inspector Crane right here. Lanyard! It's him, Chief. Hello, Mike. Where are you? Have you missed me, Inspector? <laughs> well, never mind where I am. I'm on my way out to Cooper's house. I'm leaving right away. I expect I'll see you there. What's the idea? There are a couple of unscrupulous citizens at Cooper's house, and I want the police to catch up with them. And while we're there, after the coast is clear, I hope we'll be able to pick up a new lead. Now, fun's fun, Mike, but it's getting late. And I'd better get my copy in for tomorrow's column. I'll give you just one more wild goose chase. Don't worry, Sidney. I promised you some exciting news, and I'm a man of my word. Oh, uh, after you. James. While we're at Cooper's house, I want you to put those jewels back where you found them, understand? And don't let Shannon see you do it. Very well, sir. Well, he didn't come in this way. Shh. Come on. thugs have done to this room. They were after something, Cooper had. Oh, what, for instance? Oh, jewels? Seems that uh, Cooper was quite a fella for jewelry. You mean that uh, you think that they killed him? Maybe. Maybe not. Uh, Jameson, have a look in that desk and see what you can find. Well, uh, don't mind me, boys. Just go right ahead and make like I don't exist. figure out what you two are trying to get away with around here, but, uh, you know, Mike, I'm beginning to believe that maybe you didn't commit the murder. <laughs> Nobody could be as guilty as he acts. I've got a hand to do you, old boy. You never miss a thing, do you?
Hello. Mr. Cooper, you asked me to call you at 10 o'clock, sir? Uh-huh. Your plane will leave from gate three in an hour, sir, and that party has just left for the airport. Oh. Say, this isn't Mr. Cooper. Who is it? So, Mr. Cooper was planning to leave town tonight with someone. Whoever it is is already on the way to the airport. We've got to hurry, gentlemen. It's getting late. Mr. Cooper's plane leaves at 11 o'clock. Names, please. I'm impressed. I just want a few words with somebody on this plane. All right, Mr. Shannon, but your friends will have to wait. Well, I'll get the passenger list, Mike, and let you know who's aboard. Wait here for him. Now that we're alone, Jameson... Oh, I meant to put those jewels back, sir. Really, I did. But those diamonds, they kind of got the better of me, sir. They're such pretty things. And after that, sir, well, <laughs> it was too late. Shannon never took his eyes off me. If we're caught, and you're found with those jewels, well, we just can't be caught. Yes, of course, Mr. Lanyard. Oh, lovely, sir. Very lovely indeed. Hang on to yourself, Jameson. Isn't she just like an angel, sir? Your ticket, miss. Thank you. Thank you. Follow her, Jameson. With pleasure, sir. We do meet the loveliest people, don't we? I'll wait for Shannon. You find out where she goes and phone me at the apartment in half an hour. Don't lose sight of her. Oh, no, sir. Oh, never mind about today's news, Mike. What about my column for tomorrow? That's what's important to me. Jane Merrick. Well, I've got the handle to you, Mike. You're closing in on Harry Cooper's little circle of feminine attractions pretty well. But you'd better hurry. It's getting close to my deadline. I'll have to turn you over to the police. If you can't put the finger on somebody. Oh, and where did our little friend Jameson disappear to, huh? Jameson is checking up on a very pretty young woman who decided not to get aboard the plane when she saw the headlines about uh, Cooper's murder. Oh, that's interesting. You found out more than I did. Oh, but, uh, after all, if Jameson's mysterious lady friend didn't know anything about the murder until after she saw the newspapers at the airport, well, then she probably had nothing at all to do with it. Oh, now, look, Mike, now, we've kidded around long enough. Why don't you give yourself up so I can go home and get some sleep, huh? Just when we're beginning to get warm? Don't you want to know who the young lady is? She might turn out to be a nice, sensational headline for you. Good old Jamison, right on the dot. Hello? Hello, Miss Lanyard. Yes. Oh, that pretty young thing, sir, just checked in at the Hotel Cumberland. She took a whole suite. I imagine she must be very lonely, sir. But I couldn't get by the front desk. Good work, Jamison. I'll meet you at the service entrance in ten minutes. Goodbye. Well, here we go again, Sidney. This way, Sydney. I think we can get up the service stairway without being seen, sir. The sweet thing is in 3A on the third floor. Um, don't you ever use a front door, Mike? Occasionally, do you? Um, socially, but uh, never professionally, of course.
me. Hello, Miss Patricia. It isn't true about Mr. Cooper, is it? It isn't true. I was afraid that... What is it, Arthur? I'm here for that necklace you were going to give him. But I... What do you mean? I mean you're going to come across quick. Or would you rather I told about your plans for this evening? Take it easy. Let me go in to hear him. That's blackmail. He can't get away wait, with that. Wait, wait, wait. What do you want? I want to know who killed Harry Cooper. I don't know anything about it. Who killed Harry Cooper? I had nothing to do with it. Will you leave me alone? But you know who killed him, don't you? Please leave me alone or I'll call the police. You hated Cooper, didn't you? I didn't. I didn't. I'm the only one that couldn't have done it. Don't you see? I couldn't have done it. Plenty of women hated him, but I didn't. But you know... <laughs> Send the house doctor up to suite 3A right away. He'll be all right. The doctor will be here in just a minute. Thank you. I'll see you later. But those shots I heard set off firecrackers. Did you see anybody down that way? No, sir. Did you see him? Oh, I saw somebody tearing down this way. But if you didn't see him pass, he must have ducked down the service stairway. Well, apparently Mr. Cooper's murderer is beginning to get jittery. Whoever fired those shots got the girl in the arm. And then tried to get me. Was she hurt badly? No, she'll be all right. You're sure? Just a nick in the arm. Well, she might have been killed. I'm going to see Eve Andrews. She's going to quit stalling around and come through with the whole truth about Cooper. From her, I'll move on to the others. That's a good idea. You and Jameson wait for me in the lobby of the Park Avenue Hotel. Oh, here, Jameson. You keep this, just in case Mr. Shannon gets restless and tries to communicate with the police. <laughs> Sorry, Sidney, but from now on, we're not playing games. I'm sorry, Arthur. Miss Andrews isn't here. Why did you want to see her? Oh, I guess she and Mrs. Bodine have gone to see Miss Jane Merrick at the Royal Theater. They're all friends of Mr. Cooper's, and I've got a hunch they have things to talk about. Why? What makes you think that? Oh, I'm sorry, old man. Well, that's all right. Who's your friend? Harry Cooper's valet. Why? Why should Harry Cooper's valet think that Miss Andrews and Mrs. Bodine went to the Royal Theater to see uh, Jane Merrick? Why not? They're old friends. No doubt they had things to discuss. Harry Cooper's murder, for instance? Say, what's all this to you? Who do you think you are cross-examining me like this? Just a man who wants to find out who murdered Harry Cooper. After all, I should think you'd be a little interested yourself, Mr. Sheldon. I think your fiancé is mixed up in a very serious business. If I were you, I wouldn't think that, Mr. Norton. Not out loud. You'd better be sure. I will be before the evening's over. And just in case you get a little worried about her yourself, you know where she is. Eve Andrews doesn't return in 15 minutes. Follow me to the Royal Theater. 
I'm going to call on Miss Jane Merrick backstage. Be good, sir. Hey, Mike! Mike! Say, what is this? Lanyard promised me I'd be in on everything that goes on. I'm going down to the Royal Theatre, too. Oh, taxi! Not just yet, sir, if you don't mind. We'll wait here for a few minutes. Somebody saw us earlier tonight. You mean at his house? Yes. Come on. What are they? Arthur! I'm here on business, girl, so let's skip the formalities. What do you want? Well, let's just say that I'm here to continue negotiations where poor Mr. Cooper left off. The boss was getting a diamond bracelet from you, wasn't he, Miss Andrews? And I'll take that diamond ring from you, Mrs. Bodine, and that clip that you were going to give Mr. Cooper, Miss Merrick. Make it snappy, girls. I have no time to argue, so just come across, please. Suppose the police were to find out where you girls were this evening. Drop that gun, Arthur. What do you mean by frightening these three beautiful ladies? Uh-uh. Mustn't touch, Mike. Well, Inspector, you're ahead of schedule. I didn't expect you to catch up for quite a while. All right, outside, everybody. Line them up against the back wall, Diggins. I'm going to find out who's who and what's what. Come on, outside. Outside, everybody. Come on. Just a minute. Oh, it's okay. I'm Sidney Shannon. Oh, hello, Inspector. What goes on? Oh, hello, Sidney. Better get your pencil ready. By the way, Inspector, have you met Arthur, Mr. Cooper's valet? Face is familiar. Those were probably his pals you and Dickens were chasing at Cooper's house. Did you catch up with them? Yes. Good. They plan to rob Cooper tonight. And that isn't all. Arthur was attempting to blackmail these three ladies. When I interrupted him a few minutes ago, wasn't he, ladies? Yes. Oh, good evening, Dr. Bodine. Good evening. Oh, Sidney, I promised you some sensational dirt, and here it comes. Sorry, Inspector, but I can't get away just yet. Good evening, gentlemen. I've been expecting you. Inspector, the case against me looks pretty bad, doesn't it? Obviously, it would be bad for anyone who was at Cooper's tonight, even though Cooper was dead when I got there. But did you know that these three ladies were there when Cooper was killed? It's a lie. Sonia. Sonia. I refuse to be questioned like this. Sonia, deny it. Why should I? Eve, I know you couldn't have had anything to do with the murder, but you can't stop now. You must tell us what you were doing at Cooper's house. Johnny, Cooper was trying to blackmail me. Blackmail you? How? Why didn't you tell me about it? I should have. I know that now, but... He threatened to go to your father, and I knew if he did, we never could have been married. I was terrified. I hated him, Johnny. But I didn't kill him. I swear I didn't. Sonia and Jane were afraid of Cooper, too. They had as much reason to hate him as I did. Don't drag me into this. I had nothing to do with it. No, me. Don't try to blame me. I don't know who killed Cooper. But when the lights went out, we heard the shot. And I lit a match. And you were near as Cooper's body. You could have done it. Stop her, Sonia. Don't let her say a thing like that. Why not? It might as well come out now. I was there. I went to bribe Cooper to keep his mouth shut to protect you from a scandal. <laughs> That's a laugh, isn't it? But just before Cooper was killed tonight, I made up my mind to stop pretending that I care any more about you than you do about me. I was about to tell him to go ahead and make a scandal. He was getting no more jewels from me to protect you. Put that in your call, Mr. Shannon, and see how he likes it. 
Sonia, you don't know what you're saying. Oh, yes, I do. Gentlemen, I didn't kill Harry Cooper for the simple reason that my husband means absolutely nothing to me. You're sure you didn't kill him, Jane? My husband means quite a lot to you, doesn't he? That's enough, Sonia. Leave Jane out of this. Of course. Jane isn't the type. She couldn't have done it, could she? Jane, tell them you didn't do it. Eric, you're being ridiculous. After all, I have my career to worry about. Our little romance isn't that important to me. <laughs> Don't flatter yourself. I wouldn't commit murder for you or any man on earth. I've got to hand it to you, Mike. The dirt is certainly pouring out now, all right? We're not interested in your gossip column, Shannon. Gentlemen, gentlemen, please. You're breaking the spell. Let's let the murderer convict himself or herself. Come, come, ladies and gentlemen. Don't stop now. You were doing beautifully. Why did you interrupt them? Is that all you had to say, Miss Mary? Dr. Bodine, you had more than sufficient reason to hate Harry Cooper. Haven't you anything to say? Ladies and gentlemen, one of you killed Harry Cooper. Well, Mike, I... Shh, Inspector. This strain is beginning to tell. Give the murderer a chance to do the talking. Strain yourselves, gentlemen, please. Not now, Jameson, not now. Oh, but I've come to the rescue, sir. Jameson, you have the most amazing knack of doing the right thing at the wrong time. Wait a minute, you! Stop him, somebody, stop him! Inspector, I'm afraid Jameson and I must be leaving. It's unfortunate that we were interrupted just when the murderer was about to give himself away. You think I killed Harry Cooper, but you're wrong, Inspector. The guilty person is within your reach, and the proof is not far away. So stay close to your phone, Inspector. I'll call you up very soon and lay that proof right on the line. Where'd you get that thing, Jameson? It's just a fake, sir. I got it out of the prop truck. It's loaded with blanks. Oh. Well, here, let's jam the trigger and leave it on the floor to speak for itself. Lanyard or Jameson? No, sir. The other guy got away, too. Get back to headquarters and wait for Lanyard's telephone call. Right, Chief. Well, we got away again, sir, I'm afraid. Mm, cheer up, Jameson. If my hunch doesn't come through, we won't get away. Oh, come now, sir. We always win out in the end, don't we? Do we? Well, don't we? I expect we'll have company. You wait here. And if you see anybody you recognize, male or female, let me know. Well, whom do you expect, sir? Oh, good evening. Good evening. How's the patient? Just fine. I hope that wound isn't too painful. Let's see, the unfortunate interruption occurred just when you were going to tell me about Harry Cooper. Listen. I don't know who you are, but the last time we talked about Mr. Cooper, you know what happened. You loved Harry Cooper, didn't you? Will you please go away? You loved him, didn't you? Why was he killed? You're implicated too, you know, so you'd better tell me. All right, I loved him. Isn't that enough for me to say? Now will you please go away? You loved him and that's why he was killed. Thanks, Patricia. That is all you have to say. But I didn't say that. Mr. Lanyard. Someone's coming down the corridor, sir. Oh, well, close the door. No, no, not all the way. Here. Just leave it like that. Hello. Now, tell Inspector Crane at police headquarters that Michael Lanyard is here in suite 3A. Right. Keep out of sight, Jameson. 
Remember, you're here just in case. Oh, hello, Mike. Oh, it's you, Sidney. I'm glad you came. Huh? The way, how did you know where to find me? Oh, that was simple. I knew you'd come back here. But I'm afraid it's not going to be quite so simple for Inspector Crane to figure out. Oh, well, if it's the inspector you're going to call, I've already saved you the trouble, Sidney. He's on his way. Well, that's fine. Yes, I believe you know Patricia, don't you, Sidney? Mm-hmm. Patricia just gave me some interesting gossip for your column. She told me that she was in love with Harry Cooper. Sidney, I didn't! Yeah, uh, Jameson. Give that to me, Jameson. So, Mike, you were going to prove I was wrong, huh? And I find your man with his gun in Shannon's back. Cuff him, Dickens. With pleasure. And frisk him. I beg your pardon, I beg your pardon. Oh, do me a favor, Crane. And call out the army or whatever it takes to get these two downtown once and for all. Now, none of your tricks this time, Mike. Come on, we're going for a ride. I've got some very interesting information for you, Inspector. Very interesting. Nothing doing. Oh, all right, you win. Over the way. Have you met this lady? Here, this card will introduce her. Mrs. Patricia Blake Shannon. How do you do, Mrs. Shannon? Ask Mr. Shannon what his wife was doing at the airport tonight. That's ridiculous. Don't listen to him. The murderer was afraid I'd find out that she and Cooper were planning to run away together. He got panicky and took a shot at her. Then he tried to get me. I told you not to listen to him. Take him downtown, Crane. He's getting delirious. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute, both of you. There's the man who killed Cooper. That's very interesting, Mike. But I happen to know that some valuable jewelry has been missing since that murder. That was the motive for this crime. You find me the man with those jewels and I'll have the murderer. The jewels had nothing to do with it. Very nice story for the tabloids, Mike, but it won't hold in a court of law. Come on now, we're going downtown. Oh, all right, Crane. But if you really think the jewels had anything to do with the crime, do me one last favor. Search Shannon. <laughs> all right, if you won't mind, Mr. Shannon, just humor our smart friend here. Not at all. <laughs> go ahead, Dickens, go ahead. But as uh, Shannon had the jewels. Well, it'd be a lesson to you, Jameson. Yes, sir. What I don't understand is how you knew he had my them. Purse, well, I my knew the Dickens was about to search you. Besides, your hands are slower than they used to be. Yes, do you mind if we hurry, sir? What? Somebody stole it. I had it just a minute ago. In fact, if you don't mind the exercise, I suggest that we, we run a bit. Jameson, not again. Haven't we had handbag trouble enough for one evening? Do you want to start the whole thing over again? Jameson, you're fired. And this time, I hope I mean it. What is that? The whole look! Joe Eyebrows has got it. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute.
lies dead on a slab. Looks like a suicide, right? Somebody else was in the room. New NCIS, then. They went in hard and bent the bird up. They're dropping more around. I'm going to check on survivors. Sergeant Worth is alive. You are alive, or I will shoot you out of the sky myself. The Unit, TV's best action and adventure, is on CBS Tuesday. Bobby Day, police, open up. You're never gonna win this war. There is blood on my hands. You know something you're not saying? Am I under arrest? There might be a mole in the department. Someone's planning to destroy this lab. The final four episodes of this season. You and I had a chance and you blew it. A deadly honeymoon cruise. Man overboard! Someone help him! There's sharks in the water with him. A CSI Miami wedding. You said that you were there for me. Does that include marriage? It does. A courtroom shootout. And a season finale shocker. If you ever contact my wife again, I'm gonna kill you. Even we couldn't believe. Oh my god. The final four episodes of this season begin Monday, May 1st. Miami in May. Only on CBS. It's spring in Maryland, and weather can change in an instant. But one thing never changes. WJZ's Bob Turk with complete first warning weather coverage. Accurate forecast. The first warning of severe weather in your neighborhood. Bob Turk and his team. Meteorologist Tim Williams. Meteorologist Bernadette Woods. And Marty Bass. They'll bring you complete first warning weather coverage. On TV. Online. WJZ 13 is Baltimore's news station. Good news. I got promoted. Better news, they got DirecTV. My new office has a clear view for miles. My DirecTV has 155 crystal clear channels. I have a $1,700 expense account. I have over 1,700 movies every month. I meet with the CEO every Friday. I meet the Fockers whenever I want. I just got an assistant. I just got three months of HBO, Star, Showtime, and Cinemax for free. Can you give me the number for DirecTV? No. I don't think she heard me. Get over 155 channels for $29.99 a month. That's half the price of cable. Call 1-800-DIRECTV. Hyundai's Proving Grounds, the perfect place to announce the Hyundai Challenge. We're out to prove that our new Sonata is the best value running. Here are the stats. More standard safety features and interior space than a Honda Accord. America's best warranty. $4,500 less than Accord. Need more data? Go to our best Proving Ground. Your nearest Hyundai dealer. Take the Hyundai Challenge and then take your pick on Sonata. A $199 a month lease, up to $2,500 cash back or 2.9% APR for up to 60 months and $1,000 bonus cash. Hurry, ends May 1st. Sweet 16 shattered police search for the man who killed the birthday girl's father on Eyewitness News tonight.